I'm Claire and welcome to GSE Learning Lab. Today we're going to be talking all about the heart. Now, to better understand the structures, we're going to take a closer look at a sheep's heart. But first, I want you to pause the video and have a chat about what you think the heart does. Our heart has the very important job of pumping blood around our body through blood vessels. If you look closely at your hands and arms, you might be able to see some of these blood vessels. They can be tricky to spot and lights like this one can make it a little bit easier. Our blood is made up of a few different parts, one of which is red blood cells. Now, these red blood cells are incredibly important because they carry oxygen and carbon dioxide around our body. And remember, we need oxygen to get energy from our food. So red blood cells help keep us alive. But what happens if you live somewhere where there isn't much oxygen in the air, like a mountain? Sherpas are a group of people who live and work in the world's highest mountains, the Himalayas. Their bodies have changed or adapted so that they can survive in this extreme environment. Inside their blood, they have more red blood cells so they can carry as much oxygen as possible even when there isn't much oxygen in the air. Let's do an experiment. If you want to, push your arms out to the side and start making circles. Every day of our life, our heart beats 60 to 100 times a minute. That's 100,000 times a day. By the time that you reach 70 years old, that is two and a half billion heartbeats. Now, our heart is made of a special kind of muscle called cardiac muscle, which never gets tired. Unlike our arm muscles, which might be feeling a bit sore by now. Let's shake them off. When we use the muscles in our arms, they build up something called lactic acid, which makes them feel tired. Now, to get rid of the lactic acid, all we need to do is rest our muscles and not use them for a while. But we can't do that with our heart muscle. We need it to keep us alive. And that is why our heart is made of cardiac muscle that never needs a break. Let's get a closer look at the heart. Now, today we're using a sheep's heart because the structures are very similar to ours and it's even about the same size as your heart. This is the front of our heart and it sits like this in our chest, right in between our two lungs. Now, the heart has got four chambers or spaces that the blood can flow through, two at the top and two at the bottom. Let's flip our heart over and get a closer look inside at those structures. The blood first enters the right side of the heart and it comes in through this blood vessel called a vein. First, the blood fills the top chamber and then moves down into this bottom chamber. This blood doesn't contain oxygen because it's already been around the body dropping off oxygen and picking up carbon dioxide, which we now need to breathe out. Pause the video and discuss where you think the blood needs to go next so we can breathe out the carbon dioxide. Next, the blood needs to go to our lungs and it gets squeezed out of the right side of the heart to the lungs through this blood vessel called an artery. At the lungs, the blood drops off carbon dioxide and picks up oxygen. Now, every cell in our body needs oxygen to survive. So the blood needs to go back to our heart so it can get pushed out around the body. This time, the blood enters the left side of our heart and it comes in through this blood vessel called a vein. Again, the blood fills the top chamber and then moves down into this bottom chamber. Now the blood is ready to get pushed out of the left side of the heart to the rest of the body and it goes through this blood vessel called an artery. Now, 
The order that the blood flows through our heart is extremely important because it needs to go to the lungs to pick up oxygen before it goes to the rest of the body. So to recap, the blood first enters the right side of the heart so it can get pushed out to the lungs. At the lungs, it drops off carbon dioxide and picks up oxygen. Then it travels back to the left side of the heart so it can get pushed out around to the rest of the body. Right side, lungs, left side, body. If we take a closer look at the walls of the heart, you might notice that the right side is much thinner than the left side. Now, that's because the right side of our heart only has to push blood to our lungs, which are very close by but the left side has to push blood all around the body, from the top of our head to the tips of our toes. So this muscle has to be much thicker and stronger. It might sound strange, but our heart actually needs blood to survive too. Because it's a muscle, it needs oxygen to release energy. So there are small blood vessels that deliver blood back to the heart. And if these blood vessels get blocked and blood can't flow to the heart, it can cause a heart attack. Eating foods that contain lots of a fatty substance called cholesterol can lead to these vessels becoming blocked. But luckily, scientists have developed lots of ways to help if this happens. Sometimes they put a small device inside the blood vessel called a stent, which holds the blood vessel open and lets the blood flow through. Researchers are even developing stents that have tiny sensors inside of them, which can measure how the blood is flowing through the blood vessel. And they can send a warning message as soon as the blood stops flowing properly. Eating a healthy, balanced diet and exercising regularly are great ways to keep our heart muscle nice and strong and healthy. Now, we've talked lots about how the heart works, but now it's time for a race. You're going to become a red blood cell rushing around the body, trying to deliver as much oxygen as possible. But remember, you need to go to the heart, lungs and body in the right order. Thanks for listening. Good luck.